Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It is a beautiful day to make some super cool directional signs. I'll show you how to prepare your sign so it not only looks great, but that it holds up to the elements too. Then we'll create customized arrows for people and places that may not be nearby, but are still close to our hearts. So pull up a chair here at my craft table and we'll get started. Aren't these great? I think they are such a cute way to create a nod to friends and family or to honor some of our favorite places. They could be real locations that you've been to or cities where your family and friends live or places from your favorite book or series, right? So many options, lots of fun that you could have with this. So let's talk supplies. First, you'll need three or four wooden arrows. Mine came from Dollar Tree, but you can probably find them at your local craft store or even online. You'll also need a stake to attach them to, but how will we get our arrows to attach to our stake? We're not gonna use nails, we're not gonna use screws either. You'll have to stick around to find out how we're gonna do it, but I will say it's super easy. Now, if you're making your sign on a deadline, I recommend starting this project a few days in advance because there is a fair amount of prep work and drying time with the painting and the ceiling. Now, when it comes time to painting, I'll be using chalk paint and applying it with foam brushes. What is chalk paint, you ask? Great question. So it's actually latex paint with chalk in it. Yes, really. <laughs> chalk paint gives a really soft ultra matte finish, which is really pretty on indoor and outdoor decor projects like this one. I've got this pretty teal blue color to use under my winter snowflake decals, plus white for the stake itself. And I've got these other colors to use with the custom sign too. Since you'll probably want to display your sign outside, I'll show you how to seal it with polycrylic top coat so it can stand up to the elements without chipping or peeling. Any finish works, but I like the matte finish because it keeps the look of the chalk paint. Now for your decals, you'll want to use some vinyl. I'll use silver shimmer permanent vinyl for the snowflakes and white permanent vinyl for the words, as well as all of these other colors for my custom sign later on. Now to cut the vinyl, I'll use my trusty Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine, but you can use any Cricut for this project. Any Cricut machine or cutting machine that works with SVG cut files or even DXF files will work for this project, including the little Cricut Joy. To apply the vinyl to the signs, you'll need some transfer tape. I'll use two different kinds, standard grip transfer tape, which works best with the glossy permanent vinyl, as well as strong grip transfer tape, which is made to work with heavier vinyl and textured vinyl like the glitter. But before we put anything on our arrows, we need to do some prep work using needle nose pliers and some 120 grit sandpaper. Why? I'll show you in just a few minutes. You'll need to gather up a few more things like a green standard grip machine mat, a brayer, a weeding tool, and a pair of scissors, and then you're good to go. So, are you ready to get started? I'll show you how to get the files and then we will make our own awesome sign. Step one, get my custom family sign post designs. First, download my designs at jennifermaker.com slash 552. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download for my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 552 and click the link to download the designs. Inside the folder, there are two designs, a Christmassy Santa's workshop theme and a winter fun theme with snowflakes. I'll show you how to make the winter fun sign in this video. And then later on, I'll show you how to create a personalized sign in Cricut Design Space. This project works best when made with a cutting machine, and I'm going to use a Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine in this video, but you can use any Cricut that works with design space. So an original Cricut Maker, a Cricut Explorer, any of the Cricut Explorer series, in fact, the Cricut Venture, or the Joy Extra, or even the original Joy. You can also use another cutting machine that works with SVGs or DXF files. Now, if you're not sure how to upload, go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload SVG files.
Step two, prepare and paint your wood arrows and stake. Now this part could get messy, so cover your work area with some scrap paper or butcher paper to protect it. If your signs have staples or hanging hardware like mine, use needle nose pliers to carefully remove them. If your arrows and stake have rough spots like these, lightly sand them with 120 grit sandpaper so the paint and sealant go on more smoothly. Then brush off the dust with a paper towel so everything is nice and clean and ready for paint. If you're using different arrows than these from my materials list, measure them before painting. I'll show you how later on when we create our custom sign. Place each arrow on a paper plate, then grab your chalk paint and a foam brush. I'll use another paper plate as a palette. It makes it for easy cleanup when you're all done. Use the foam brush to paint long strokes on the front of the arrow. The brush's tip works well for the edges. The back won't be visible, so don't worry about painting it. Paint your other arrows and set them on the plates so the first coats of paint can dry. You can lay the stake across a few paper plates and paint it on all sides. Leave the pieces to dry for two or three hours. Then add another coat to each one and let them dry for another few hours. Once the paint is fully dry to the touch, we're ready for the next step. For this part, you can go outside or open a window and turn on a fan to improve your ventilation. Now put on gloves and use a synthetic paintbrush to apply polycrylic to all of the painted areas on your arrows and stake. And let it dry fully overnight. Step 3. Prepare your design. While your paint or polycrylic are drying, let's cut the vinyl designs. Here's how my sign collection looks like on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. Click on the minus sign to zoom out and see everything. I only want to use the winter snowflake version this time, so with everything selected, click the ungroup icon. Then delete the Santa's workshop designs. The designs are already sized perfectly for the arrows from my materials list, so with the correct machine selected, click Make. Step 4. Cut your designs. Make sure all of the elements are on the right color mats. You can click and drag the pieces apart to give them a little breathing room. This helps for easier transfers later. This looks great! So click back on the first mat and then click Continue. On the Make screen, click Browse All Materials. This is the mat with the words, so I'll find the Premium Vinyl Permanent Glossy setting and then click Done. Select More Pressure for cleaner cuts. Place the white permanent vinyl face up on a green standard grit machine mat. Use a brayer to smooth out any bubbles and adhere the vinyl evenly to the mat. Make sure your fine point blade is in the clamp and then load your mat into your Cricut and begin cutting. When it's all finished, unload the mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and then gently roll the mat away from the vinyl. Continue cutting the second mat. For this mat, I'll use glitter vinyl, and for that, I want more pressure again. Place the vinyl on your mat and use your brayer again to adhere it well. This really makes a difference in cutting. Glitter vinyl is thicker, and it can be finicky. So before you unload your mat, use your weeding tool to peel up a corner of the vinyl to check that your cuts went all the way through. If the cuts didn't go all the way through, leave the mat on the machine and then smooth the vinyl back down and press the button for another pass. When it's all finished, unload it and roll the mat away from the vinyl. Step five, apply the vinyl to your signs. Use scissors to cut apart the words and the snowflakes for each arrow sign. Then pair them up using your Cricut Design Space screen for help if needed. We'll apply each snowflake separately to make sure the placement is perfect on each one. But don't cut up the carrier sheet just yet. Use a weeding tool to remove excess vinyl from around and within the letters and designs. Starting with the white vinyl words, cut a piece of standard grip transfer tape slightly larger than the text. Place the weeded text with the vinyl facing up. Remove the transfer tape backing and fold the edges up like a taco. Then lower the center of the transfer tape, that's the center of the bottom of the taco, right? Right onto the vinyl and press in place. 
and then smooth from the center outward for the best transfer. Use a scraper to burnish the transfer tape to the vinyl. Then remove the vinyl's original backing. Center the vinyl sticky side down over the middle of the arrow. Refer to your template in Cricut Design Space as a guide if you need it. And use your fingers to press the vinyl onto the arrow. Burnish it with a scraper to adhere it really well to the wood. Now gently pull away the transfer tape. And look how cute it already looks. Now for the snowflakes. To get the snowflake placement perfect around the words, I found it was easiest to cut and apply the snowflakes one by one. Now since the snowflakes are on thicker glitter vinyl, you'll want to cut a piece of strong grip transfer tape. Not standard grip, but strong grip because of the glitter. And you'll want it to be slightly larger than the first snowflake. I'll start in the top left. Remove the transfer tape backing, then apply and burnish the transfer tape to the first snowflake. Peel the transfer tape away from the carrier sheet, transferring the vinyl with it. And refer to your screen for help placing your snowflakes on the arrow. Or you can use your own placement, of course. Use your fingers to press it down and then burnish it with your scraper. Pull away the transfer tape and you've applied your first snowflake. How sparkly! Continue on applying the rest of the snowflakes to the arrow. If your transfer tape loses its stickiness, just start with a fresh piece. Then apply the vinyl to your other two arrows. Don't these look adorable? We're almost finished too. Arrange the arrows on the wood stake where you'd like them to go. One by one, lift an arrow and use a pencil to make a small mark where it was. Now, that secret tool I mentioned, hook and loop tape. You know, like Velcro. <laughs> so keeping the two sides stuck together, use your scissors to cut off three one inch squares. Remove the adhesive backing from the hard side of the hook and loop tape and press it firmly onto the mark you made on the wood stake. Now remove the backing from the soft side of the hook and loop tape and firmly press the arrow's middle down onto it. Attach the other tape squares to the stake and arrows the same way. And you're all done. You can change the order around too. Isn't that fun? Personalize your directional sign. So what if you want to make a sign with your own locations on it? You can totally do that. First, let's measure the arrow so we can be sure to cut the vinyl designs the right size. Now an arrow might look difficult to measure, but let's just pretend it's a rectangle attached to a triangle. First, let's measure the point of the arrow. Measure from the top tip to the bottom tip to get the point's height. Then from the arrow's point to where the triangle meets the rectangle for the width. Now on an empty canvas in Cricut Design Space, click the shapes icon and select the triangle. Click the unlock icon above the size menu. I'll enter 4.5 inches for the width and 2.75 inches for the height and then press enter. Hold on the shift key on your keyboard and position your cursor over the corner of the triangle's bounding box until a curved arrow appears. Click and drag it clockwise to rotate the triangle 90 degrees. Now measure the width and height of the rectangle part of the arrow. Click the shapes icon again and select a square. Open the lock icon and enter your dimensions. I'll enter nine and a quarter for the width and three inches for the height and then press enter. Move the triangle to slightly overlap the right edge of the rectangle. Select both shapes and click Align and then Center vertically. Then click Combine and Unite. Now you've made an arrow the same size and shape as your wooden ones. With it still selected, click the Operation menu and select Guide. The arrow shape will turn into a red outline that won't be part of the final project. Now you have a custom template. With that out of the way, let's choose a typeface for our sign. Click the text icon and then the font menu. Click System and search for any font you'd like to use. I want to use a font that I've added called JM Suite, so I'll click System and search for it. The link is in the blog post for this project if you'd like to use it. If you need any help downloading and installing fonts to use in Cricut Design Space, check out my helpful tutorial at jennifermaker.com fonts. 
and then click the X to close the font menu. Then double click on the text box and type the location you'd like on the sign. I'll type Lansing, Michigan because that's where my family is from. Click a blank space on the canvas to deselect the text and then drag the text on top of the guide arrow. Drag a corner of the text bounding box to make it the right size for the arrow and then move it to a good position. I think that looks good. Click on the color menu and select a color for the personalization. I'll change mine to white since it's going to go on a red arrow. With the text box still selected, click the duplicate icon above the layers panel. I'll move the copy down below and edit this text for my next arrow. If your arrows will point in different ways, it's nice to have a visual of how each one will look before you cut your vinyl. So select the guide and click the duplicate icon. Rotate your arrow the same way as earlier, but this time to 180 degrees. Zoom out if you need. There we go. For this one, I'll type Kyoto, Japan, which, fun fact, is a place I once called home <laughs> because I lived in Japan for a couple of years. Then I'll change its color too, but this time I'll use black. I want to decorate four arrows, so I'll use the same steps to make two more. One for Anaheim, California in white, you know, Disneyland, and another for Kona, Hawaii in orange, which was the site of our last epic vacation. When all your words are ready, make sure the right machine is selected and click make it. Then cut the designs out of your preferred permanent vinyl and apply them to your signs just like we did earlier in this video. Step six, show it off. And here are the finished results. Don't these look so awesome? I can't wait to put these out in my yard. And I really can't wait to see how yours turned out too. These are so much fun. And isn't the hook and loop tape just great? I love that hack. Sometimes you don't wanna deal with a hammer and nails, right? But with the tape, it's easy peasy. Plus you can then move the arrows around if you want. So super cool. And you can stick your sign in your yard or your flower bed outside in a large potted plant. I got these buckets from the home improvement store. I bought some trees, they were like Christmas trees, and then that's where these came from. So there's really a lot of options. Uh, you could fill your pot with sand or gravel and place it inside for an indoor display, outside if you want. It's entirely up to you. If your sign gets dirty, which it probably will if it's outside, you can just wipe it down with a damp rag. And then with the sealant on it, they should hold up really well to weather outside. But like any yard decor, I still recommend bringing it in if you're expecting some really severe weather. You don't want it to blow away after all. Now, if you have any questions about working with chalk paint, vinyl, your Cricut cutting machine, or anything else Cricut or craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And please come share photos of your signs. Posting pictures inspires others, myself included, plus it lets you show off your lovely creations. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.